Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over how to determine the displacement or the change in position uh, of an object from its velocity versus time graph. Okay, here is our first velocity versus time graph, and the question is, what is the change in position for the time interval from 0 to 24 seconds? Okay, that's what we have shown on this graph. We have velocity in meters per second on the y-axis, we have time in seconds on the x-axis, and we have a red line here that shows the motion of the object in terms of its velocity over the first 24 seconds or over 24 seconds. You can see it goes from zero velocity, moving in the positive direction to um, uh, 18 meters per second, and then it has constant velocity through 13 seconds, from five to 13 seconds, and then it's going to start to slow down, still moving in the positive direction, and um, <clears throat> from 13 to 24 seconds, and its velocity comes back to zero. All right, now, the, we want to know what the displacement is, and you should just remember this, because this is very important, that the area under the curve, so I'm going to put right here, area, under the curve is equal to the displacement. All right, so that's all you need to remember. The area under the curve is equal to the displacement. And this is the area under the curve. And what we really mean by the area under the curve is we mean the area between the curve and the zero line here, or the zero velocity line, okay, between the time line here, but that goes, that starts at zero velocity. So it's this area, we call this area the area under the curve. Now, you can see that we have basically two triangles and a rectangle. So I'm just gonna draw these lines here, make it a little easier to visualize, and you can see what I'm going to call section one, because I'm gonna do this one first, and then I'm gonna do this one and then I'm going to do this last one. So we have three sections. We have two triangles and a rectangle. And it's pretty easy to calculate the area of those triangles and those rectangles. It's just the area of those triangles and rectangles. So let's go through and do that. And the area under the curve is equal to the displacement. So I'm going to put down for the first section, I'm going to put down D for displacement. And that equals the area under the curve. And it's a rectangle. We often say the area of a rectangle is the length times the width, or the length of the sides, and the length in this case of, I'm going to call this side my length, and my length is 8, it's not just 8, it's actually 8 seconds. So if I count 5, 6, 7, 8, it's 8 seconds, and then I know the height goes from 0 up to positive 18 meters per second. So I'm going to put down that it is, uh, the height is positive 18 meters per second. And I put positive down because it is a positive velocity and I want to make sure that we know that it's positive, not negative. All right? So because we'll show one where I have negative velocity next. So 8 times 18 is 144 and you can see that this seconds cancels with this seconds and we're left with meters and meters is a measurement for displacement so we have 144 meters. So we know that from 5 seconds to 13 seconds, when the object is moving at a constant velocity of 18 meters per second, that it had a displacement of 144 meters. Okay? So now let's do the next one, set number 2. Once again, we're going to have the displacement, but we know the displacement, because it's a triangle this time, is 1 half the base times the height. So we're going to put down 0 0.5 for our 1 half. And the base of that triangle is 10 seconds, this side right here being the base, 10 seconds, and that is, whoops, I should put down 10 since I said 10 seconds, 10 seconds, and then the height, once again, is 18 meters per second, <clears throat> and I'm going to put down plus 18 meters per second, okay, we want to be Careful, we have our pluses and our minuses all lined up. Remember, positive velocity just tells you the direction that the object is going. So it is a positive velocity, so we want to put that down. So if we multiply those out, we get, you guessed it, or maybe you didn't guess it, but it is 90 meters. 10 times, point, point 0.5 times 10 is 5, and then 5 uh, times 18 is uh, 90. Okay? All right, so now we have the third one, and let's just switch colors to a different color. And we're going to do the same thing. We have the displacement for this section is equal to, it's a triangle again, one half the base times the height, and that is going to be equal to 0 
0.5 times the base. Now the base this time is just 5 seconds. And the height, once again, is plus 18 meters per second. I'm going to put my parentheses around here. And if I calculate those and I get the displacement, it's 45 meters. Okay, so from 0 to 5 seconds, the object moved 45 meters. From 5 to 13 seconds, the object had a displacement of 40, 144 meters. And then for the last 10 seconds, it was 90 meters. So therefore, we add all those up, and we know that our total displacement, and I'm going to put down plus 279 meters, okay? That is the total displacement. I put plus because the, uh, the displacement is uh, of a, a vector, so I want to put down plus so I know I moved in the positive direction. Okay, so just each section by its area, the area under the curve is the displacement. So let's go through and do another one right now. Here we have a little different situation. We have an object, we have some positive velocities and we have some negative velocities. And I'm going to draw a line here to show that this is kind of the completion of this triangle. I have triangle one, I have triangle two, and the area under the curve, here's the area under this curve, and once again it's the area between the curve and the zero timeline, so we have this area, that's our second uh, area or our second triangle. So I'm going to do the same thing, I know the area under the curve is the displacement, so I'm going to put down that this displacement for the first one is one half the base times the height, which means it's 0 0.5 times the base. The base is just 10 seconds. I made that nice and straightforward. And then I'm going to put down, and I'm going to put down that the height of this triangle is plus 8 meters per second. So I'm specifically putting plus 8 meters per second. My seconds are going to cancel, and if I multiply that out, I get that the displacement was a positive 40 meters. Okay, so that's for the first 10 seconds. Now let's do the same thing for the second 10 seconds. And uh, let's just do that in a different color. You can see now we're going to have the displacement is once again one half the base times the height. It's 0 0.5 times the base is 10 seconds. Okay, now this is the point I'm trying to make is in this case, we have negative velocity, okay? We're moving in the negative direction, we have negative velocity, so you need to put down that the height of this triangle is minus eight meters per second, okay? Here's the height I'm talking about, this height right here, and you can see that that goes over here to minus eight meters per second, and that tells you that in this case, for the second 10 seconds, the displacement was minus 40 meters, all right? Now, if I add those two together, plus 40 meters, plus a minus 40 meters, of course, the total displacement, as you should notice, is zero meters, okay? Now, this is the displacement. This is not the distance, okay? The object did move, but it moved out, and then it came back, all right? The sign of the velocity these are all positive velocities. These are all negative velocities. The sign of the velocity tells you the direction the object was going. It went in the positive direction for the first 10 seconds. It slowed down, stopped, turned around, and came back in the negative direction to the exact same place that it started. All right, so we, we have a, we started in one place, we slowed down, we stopped, and then we came back, and it's speeding up in the opposite direction and we ended up in the same place. All right, so that tells you the total displacement of the object was zero meters per second. Okay, so I think if you follow those simple steps, calculate the area under the curve, make sure you use the correct signs, especially for the velocity, add them up and uh, you'll come up with the correct answer, okay? It's very important that you're thorough and you follow those steps and follow that procedure I think you'll be successful. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.